Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode 21 of Practical Drupal Development. In this episode, we are going to incorporate a little bit of social media into our website here. Now, we're not going to do anything crazy like pull in feeds from Facebook or pull in feeds from Twitter. That is definitely um, a topic and a subject matter that is for our advanced series that is coming after this one. It's not exactly the easiest thing to do, and the Facebook and Twitter APIs keep changing all the time, so we're going to leave that for uh, the more advanced series. But what we are going to do is just come down here to the footer of our website, and we're going to incorporate some social media icons and that when we click on them, they'll take us over to that social media site. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now, the first thing we're going to need is a content type dedicated to our social media icons. So we're going to go to structure, um, content, types and add content type. And what we're going to call this is social media icon. And we're just going to say something along the lines of content of this type will appear as a social media icon. Now, you notice as I'm typing these out that I like to capitalize random words here through, throughout it. And the reason is I it's just a personal preference for me. It's not something you have to do. Um, I like to capitalize what it is and where it's going to go so those two items stand out. But you don't have to do that. It's just something that I do. But the descriptions, remember, always add a description in case you're the one not adding the content. So we are not going to promote this to the front page. We are not going to display the author information. We are going to close the comments, not put it in a menu. And we do want to enable the weight just in case we want to kind of rearrange where those social media icons appear. Maybe you have it Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and then you start finding out that your Twitter gets more views than your Facebook and you just kind of want to flip them around or whatever. Um, so we just want to make sure that we have the ability to control what order they appear in. And that's why we're going to turn the weight on here and this web form thing we don't need. So we're going to save and add fields. Now there's two fields that we need to add to this. One is going to be the field that will contain the social media image and two, the field that's going to contain the social media link path. So we don't need this body field. We're going to go ahead and delete that out of there. But we do want to add an image, and I'm just going to edit this machine name as I always do. We'll just call it social image, and it's going to be the field type image, and widget type image is fine as well. We're going to let Drupal do its thing here, save and continue. Alrighty, we're going to turn on the alt and title fields here, and that's it. So we're going to go ahead and get that in there, and there's our image. Now the next thing we need is our link field. Call it social link. And from the field types, we're going to use the link module that we downloaded, and we're going to save that. Now, um, this time, unlike the slideshow that we did where we created a link, we don't need a title field for this because you're never going to actually see that. We just need to have a field that stores a reference to a URL. So when we come down here to the link title settings, we're going to go ahead and say no title and then save that. It's just an unnecessary field and it's just going to remove this title box there and we really don't need it so we're just going to go ahead and turn it off and that's it. That's the whole social media content type. So we're going to close this down and we are going to start adding these. Now I'm going to add three of them. I'm going to add Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube here. Um, and I got the icons from, I just did a Google search for social media icon sets. If you do that, you'll find plenty. Um, there's actually quite a wide variety of different types of social media icons that you can download. Um, just ones that match the site that you're building for or the, the idea that you have in your head for the site you're building for. I went ahead and just downloaded some plain old uh, social media icons. They're a little bit nicer than the stock ones, but 
it's not really that big a deal. Um, so we're going to come in here to content, add content, and we're going to add a social media icon. Now this title is kind of arbitrary because um, it's not ever going to get displayed, but it is going to be the indicator of which one of these social media icons we're using. So it, it's unnecessary in the fact that no one will ever see it, but it's very necessary from a content creator maintainer standpoint to know this is this icon this is that icon so we're going to call this one facebook and we are going to choose an image and i have mine here on the desktop if i can find them here's my facebook png and we'll upload that and i'm just going to go ahead and send mine over to facebook.com but you'll want to put in the actual reference to your Facebook, and we're going to set it at negative 10 because we're going to have it be on the far right of our site. So we'll save that. And then we'll come up to content, add content, and we'll do another one here. And we'll do this one as Twitter. We'll grab this. See if we can find our Twitter icon, upload that. And send it over to twitter.com. Set its weight to negative 9. And we're going to go one more time up here and add our last social media icon. And this one's just going to be YouTube. Alrighty, so now we have all of our social media icons that we want to use loaded into our site. So now we need a way of collecting them together and displaying them as a single unit as a block on our page somewhere. So as you probably have figured out, um, if you've been watching the course of these tutorials, that we need to dive into views in order to do this because we need to bring this particular content type together. So we're going to come up to view and we're going to add a new view. And we are going to also call this view social media icon. We want content of type social media. We do not want to create a page, but we do want to create a block. The block does not need a title, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. We're also going to get rid of the items per page because we want all of our social media icons, not just the... Um, the five that we want to show there. So we're going to change it from unformatted list to grid, and we're going to continue and edit. Now, when we scroll down here, you can see that we have YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, and that is in the order that we want them in, but it's not because of the weight that we set. It's because of this post date. So we're going to come into the sort criteria, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to handle our sorting because this is something that I always have a tendency to forget to do. So I want to make sure that we do it first and foremost so that I don't forget. We're going to leave it ascending. And then we're just going to come back in here to this post date and we're going to remove it. And ascending seems to be perfect. Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So, now what do we need to do to get this icon in and this link in? And now we know how to do that. We just come up here to the add fields, but we need to figure out how are we going to actually get that image to link because we don't want to display the image and then just have this long string of, you know, URL text underneath it because the Facebook URLs have a tendency to get kind of long. So let's, let's go ahead and add our fields here real quick, and then we'll discuss how we're going to go about making the, um, the image actually be the link and not the link. So we're going to go ahead and type in social media, and you can see that we just drop down to our image and our link. And we will take that off. Now, you do have the option of creating an image style for your... Um, for your social media icons, you know how to do that. It's not really all that difficult. Just go into uh, the configuration media image styles and add a new image style and apply it here. I'm not going to do that because my social media icons are a little big, but I don't mind it. I, I kind of like them being big for this particular site. So we're just going to go ahead and leave that as the original. 
And now the link, we obviously don't want to display the title as the link because we shut the title off. So there's not actually going to be anything there to display. So we're going to change that to URL as link. And we're going to go ahead and apply that. And then we're going to get rid of the title because we don't need that either because we don't care if people see it. They should know by the icon what it is. So now you'll see down here that we have the image and the URL. Now this is the situation that we had just discussed that we don't want to encounter where people see the the image but then they have to click on this large URL string here in order to get there. We want the image to be the actual link and we don't actually even want to display this URL text at all. So in order to do that we are going to come up here to the little arrow next to the add button and click that and go to rearrange. We're going to drag the link up above the image, and there is a reason that we're dragging it above, um, and I'll explain that in a minute. Click on the link field, and we're just going to exclude it from the display. We don't even want it to be seen. So now all we have is our social media icons. Now this is the visual result of what we want, but it's not the functional result because they don't do anything. Um, if you click in the image here, You'll see we have a couple of options to link to, but none of them are exactly what we want because we don't want to link to the file and we don't want to link to the content because it's not really all that useful. Um, so there's really nothing in here that we want to use, but if we come down to the rewrite results option here, you'll see that we have this option to output this field as a link. Um, now if you click on that and scroll all the way down to the replacement patterns and click that, you'll see that we have a replacement pattern for our social media link. Now this is um, generated for us thankfully from the token module and if we copy this and scroll on up and paste that into the link path, this token it actually stores the value of that social media link that is on that same node. So instead of being field underscore on social underscore link, what this actually represents for the Facebook icon is facebook.com or whatever URL you placed in there. So this is now going to make that image link to whatever field that you placed into that link field. Now the reason that we had to move it up above the image is because the replacement patterns patterns are only available for the item you're on and the items above it. If we move that link field down below the image, it will not be available to us in this replacement patterns option. Um, it just can't see everything below it. I'm not sure why they did it quite that way. I think it's the way that the PHP runs its queries. So um, it has to be above it in order to use it as a replacement pattern. We're going to just, sorry, my recorder doesn't like my... Uh, my settings there, so we're just going to ignore that for a minute. Um, so it has to be above it in order to use it as a replacement pattern. So now in the target settings, we want to do underscore blank. The reason that we want to do underscore blank is because this is going to open it in a new tab. Now it's great that people are clicking on your social media icons. It might reload right in that screen and take you to your Facebook, and it's not so bad because it is still you. I mean, they're going from one of your sites to one of your other sites, but remember, that your website is the the thing that you have the most marketing control over. Um, Facebook limits you in a lot of ways. Twitter limits you in a lot of other ways, and so does YouTube. There's not that... Um, that kind of sense of complete customization. You have to work within the bounds of what they're telling you you have to work into. So by having people navigate away from your website, when they close that window that they navigated away to, it's always best that they then get brought back directly to your website because it was never kind of gone away from. It just opened in a new tab. So they click the Facebook. It opens your Facebook in a new tab. They read through that, and when they close it, they're back on your website, and they're back on that hub where you have complete control, where you can give them all of the information that you want to give them. So it's always a good idea 
for obviously any external links that go to another site that has nothing to do with you, open that in a new tab. But even the ones that do have something to do with you, open that in a new tab as well because when they close that tab, they're going to be brought back to your massive hub of information. So let's go ahead and apply this and see what that did to our social media links. They are now a link. You can see by the finger icon, and in the bottom uh, left corner of Google Chrome, you will also see that it outputs the link that it's going to. So this is actually the result that we want. We're going to come up here to the grid settings, and we are going to change this to three since we only have three. Um, but if you have five, six different social media sites, you can change that. Um, there is another method of using the unformatted list and the CSS to kind of just make sure that no matter how many you have, they're all on the same line. But that's kind of a little bit more advanced CSS stuff, and we'll cover that later. So for now, we're just going to set our grid settings to the amount of social media icons that we have. We're going to go ahead and save this. and close it down. We're going to come up to Structure Blocks, and we are going to go find our new social media block. So if we find it here, we're going to put it in our footer. And I like to make sure, because I know how I'm going to do the CSS of this, that the social media icons are on top, because we're going to float them over to the right. And it's always easier to float things to the right when they're on top, because you still have the height of the other items that are in there. So here's our social media block, and that CSS thing will make sense here in the next few episodes when we start diving into theming. But there's our social media icons in the footer of our site here. Now, Bartik has a couple of other block regions. If we come back up here to structure blocks, demonstrate the block regions here. We can see that we do have a three across here. Now, it's not in this dark, but we also have this four across. So if you want to see what this is actually going to look like a little better, we can come up here to the blocks, and we can set this social media block into the footer fourth column, this into the footer third column, and maybe this copy right into the footer first. And this will give you a little better idea of what it's actually going to look like when it's all done because this content region is going to be straight across. We're going to have to click home. And now you have a little better idea of what this is going to look like. Now, mind you, we do need to do some serious theming here because this is getting kind of clumped up in here. But we'll take care of that um, in the future episodes here. But that is how you get a social media icon in. If you click it, You'll see that we open in a new tab, and we are on Facebook there, or the YouTube channel here. And that's it. That's how we inter incorporate just a little bit of social media, because these sites do offer um, a little more personalization like in communication. You know, people go to your Facebook to kind of get more of that personal appeal, and they go to your Twitter for sure to get more of that personal appeal. And obviously for a channel like mine, YouTube is great because it houses all my videos. Um, but that is how you get a little slight social media integration into your site. We are just about done. I am going to go ahead and go through this site and review it to make sure that there's not anything else that we might want to add to it. And then if there's not, we are going to go ahead and start the theming portion of this series. Now, if there is anything that you would like to see um, from a basic standpoint, just remember that we're not we're not going to dive into something like how do you incorporate the, you know, your whole news feed from Facebook over into the website. But if there is something that you really need to know how to do um, it, and it, it's not something that seems too complicated but you need to know it or you want to know it um, before we hit the theming portion, shoot me an email and let me know what the topic is. Just kind of give me a rough overview of it, and then I'll decide if we're going to go ahead and do it in this series or the next series. But if there's something that you want to see us add to this site, um, please get a hold of me 
very soon and let me know because we're going to be really moving on with this to, to get it kind of completed. Now the key is that it's always easier to finish building your site before you finish theming your site. So that's why I want you to let me know now what it is that you might want to cover before we start diving into the CSS because we want to focus solely on that when we get to that point. So I'm going to review the site. I'm going to see if there's anything else I want to add to it. Um, and in the meantime, time, please review the site yourself. Let me know if there's anything else you would like to add to it. And you can send those to one stop how to guys at gmail.com. We will cover what we need to cover. And then we will move on to theming. So if you like this episode, make sure you hit that like button in the bottom, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and I will see you in the next episode of one stop how to guys practical Drupal development. I'm not going to